Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about the election series with Johnny Toe. It's election one and election two. Now I've just done a video on Reservoir Dogs and uh, City on Fire where I said I didn't think the Reservoir Dogs added up. That comes out in real contrast when I talk about election one and two because I think these films do add up. These are, I'd say election one and two are far superior to Reservoir Dogs. Like just by a mile, they're just better films. Like in every possible way to Reservoir Dogs. You know, I'm sure it's blasphemy for some people, but I don't care. Election 1 or 2 are brilliant. They're just so much fun, but especially the second one. The second one is really good. Because it builds, it's sort of like the Godfather 1 and 2 where the second one builds on the first one and sort of takes up this, what the first one built and then just takes it much further into darkness and um, nastiness. Um, the first one is set in um, Hong Kong, it's about the triads, and one of the triad institutions, because there's various ones around Hong Kong, but there's one that has lots of members, the leadership have an election to vote who's going to be the godfather of the triads for the next two years. That, that's meant to save any fighting for power. You elect a leader, they're there for a short time, and then they're gone, they move on, someone else takes over the next two years, then someone in the next two years, so everyone gets a turn to be the godfather, but you have to earn it by carrying your votes and making people feel that you could carry the leadership position for a while, but also with understanding you will give it up at some point so there's no power control there, that there's no someone not abusing the power, and it also means no one can actually have a long run where they start wars with other people. It's just that we defend everyone's rights and make sure everyone's treated fairly and allows people to get ahead without you know anybody messing with them and there's now a new election the uh, the old leader Whistler is retiring obviously and so for the election you have to get all the votes and you also have to get this uh, object this sort of stick this wooden stick thing that's been carved that has to be passed over so everyone knows you're the leader and there's two people who are actually going for the leader. There's Locke, who's the very sane, civilised one. Everyone trusts him. Everyone says the same thing about him. He's a good guy. He will run this the way we want it to be run. He doesn't have an ego. He helps people out when they're in trouble and doesn't ask for any... He's, he's a nice guy. Then there's a wild card character who runs a casino and he wants to take over because he wants to expand everything. He well, he sees the future as open to this these groups, this group of triad. And everyone's feared, scared of him. But some people want him because they know they'll make he'll make them money. But others want to go with Locke. So the first half of the film is about the power struggles between these two and them trying to get the votes to rip with the main leaders of the triad to become the leader and Locke wins ultimately they say no he's the reliable one we can trust him this other guy may be okay in a year or two but not quite yet he's not quite the guy for us yet and that's when the, the struggle really hits because this guy won't give up and the police in the area don't care that there's triads, they just don't want a war between the triads. So they're arresting everybody, they keep them in jail until they, everything's calmed down, and allows them to talk to each other directly without it being recorded so they can try and stop this thing from becoming a war. So all the different people around about them have to find this one object and get it to lock so he can end the war. And also the trial leaders have to talk to this guy who's the world card to actually get him to give in and let Locke be the leader. And it's all about this, the political machinations also getting this thing from China to Hong Kong and people cross, double crossing each other left and right to do up their positions in the triad. And it's just wonderful because it's not overstated, there's not tons of action scenes, it's all about the talking, it's all about calm negotiation and what is the person about, can they be reasoned with, what's their issue. Just wonderful, so enjoyable. You just, and it's only about an hour 40, so it's not a long film, but you feel that you've got your money's worth.
just watching and watching these people talk to each other and negotiate and find a solution to the problems. It's just a joy to watch. Election 2 takes place two years later and the lock is coming to the end of his um, his reign and he does not want to give it up and there's a character called Jimmy from the first one who becomes a protagonist in this one and he's been forced by the Chinese and by other people in the area in the triad to run for, for office he's a young guy but they want him to run for two years to get locked out because they know he doesn't want to be in power for for any time beyond those two years. He, he has no power structure ambitions and Locke seems to have built and built over those two years and now Locke does not want to give up the power. So it becomes a power struggle between these two characters, one who used to be viewed as um, logical and calm and who now becomes a power terror and then there's one who everyone likes and who everyone sees as calm as the future. And it's another tough war basically and that's when there's less talking and there's more actual brutality and it's like how far will you go to, to get your position and how brutal will the politics become and it's a much more brutal film but it's a very satisfying one because it takes the idea of the triads and what's actually below the surface of it rather than romanticising it what's good with these films is as it goes on as, you, as the films progress you see more of the triad world, more of the corruption, more of the nastiness, just the pure brutality and how disloyal people can actually be in this world and how they, they, they can easily lie to each other. So it starts off everyone looks like friends and looks like they're kind of very logical, but the more you get into it, the more you realise how out of control that is. Now, I'm going to have to go into spoilers now to talk about this film, but I'll leave it this for people who want to stop now, go watch these films, they're great. Great acting, great direction, the pacing is wonderful and you can actually watch them like one long film because one progresses from the other but it doesn't, but it's not like a sequel where they're, they're repeating everything, it's like it's a sale of a situation but the character, you've heard, you know the character so much more now that by the time because the second one comes around it's a very different setup ultimately, the situation is the same but the characters are different so they react very differently. So any spoilers, now at the end of the first one you see Locke's progression from being an amiable team player to being a power hungry guy when he takes, like he, he gets a deal with his enemy for the triads to be his number two basically, say I'll support you next time round and so you can be the next leader and I'll lead for these two years and you'll be the next one and we'll continue what we're doing for these four years. So you can see a, a, a slight corruption of this world, but it's a corrupt world anyway, so that's probably happened in the past. And then you see their, them using the perception they're still fighting each other against their neighbouring triad so they can take him out. So this guy thinks they're fighting each other, can think they can play both sides, and they use it on him to kill this guy and take over that territory, which is even more money involved. And then at the end, Locke kills his enemy during a fishing trip because he realises this guy will not stop, this guy wants to be leader now, no matter what he says, he wants to be leader and there's no stopping him. So, so you finally see Locke turn from being a team player to being someone who's really power hungry. You see the mask completely come off, he's brutal and his mask has been dropped to his son as well. His son sees this and sees his father is not who he thought he was. So a very brutal ending, very dark ending. In Election 2, this is the lock you're dealing with. A guy everyone kind of understands now is not who he seems to be. And he ends up taking out one of the characters from the first film early on for suggesting that he killed his old boss. <coughs> just out of spite, just because he didn't like hearing that, even though it's true. And Jimmy, the character Jimmy, who was important in the first film to getting the baton thing back to him <coughs> is now viewed as, a, as the guy who's leaving the, the triad world who has got a lot of business connections he doesn't need the triads anymore but they want him as a leader because he's got business connections and he will add stability for a while 
and the suggestion that the outside world, seeing how big this tribe has got, wants a person in there who can control it, can control the chaos that Locke's creating. So they have Jimmy arrested and say, look, you have to become the triad leader or you won't get any connection, your connections in China, all your business connections will be gone. So do this or lose out entirely. So he has to go and actually fight a thing he doesn't want to do to take over this world that he doesn't want to take on Locke. And that leads him down a really dark path because he, he realises he has to utterly defeat this monster to win. He has to turn... He can do the normal fights. They can send assassins after each other and try and say, oh, it wasn't me. You know, they can do all this stuff to um, damage these damage of enemies, which Locke tries by having this guy no one knows be his assass personal assassin who no one ever knows of. But that doesn't, that doesn't work because Jimmy's ahead of the game in that one. And Jimmy realises how hard it's going to be, so he actually kidnaps a few of the henchmen of Locke, traps them in a building, puts, puts them in a cage with rabid dogs, and makes them change their loyalties very slowly over time. And... It's a pretty brutal sequence where you see how far Jimmy's want to go to win. And it's horrifying, but it is a really wonderful sequence because it shows you how dark it's going. It shows you this is the triad. This is the non messing around. This is the triad. This is what you are if you're a triad guy. You may try and pro project civility and a lot of uh, drinking and gambling and having fun, but no, this is what you actually are. And by the end of it, Jimmy's. One that he ends up turning these people in the air to end up killing Locke. And, and this is part of point Locke's son has gone completely off the radar and just gone completely against his father. So Locke's lost everything by winning. He just lost everything by being greedy and just losing control, self any self control. And Jimmy sees this and he's, he's glad he's only two years. And then there's a twist at the end where the Chinese said, no, you're not in for two years, you're in for good. You take over this triad and you and your son will be the leader of the triad. We want stability in Hong Kong. This is the triad that's going to be the successful one. We're going to work through you to take over Hong Kong before we have to take over officially so that the crime in Hong Kong is under our control. Which is a brilliant end and it's utterly brutal because this cop character was in the first one a little bit. But you just think he's another character within the, within the landscape, but as the second one comes out, because you find that he's been undercover during the first one. In the first one, he was undercover before. And then you realise he's been planning all of this. He's been keeping ahead of everybody. He's been watching everyone and seeing who he can manipulate. And he's the final turn of the screws. Like, you're, you're, you're in for good because you're, you're sane. And you don't want it, so that's why you should be in for good. And it's a wonderful ending, and it's like... There's nowhere else to go from this series after that end, and that's just a perfect end, and, and it just shows a compromise that you can't escape the triad life even if you try, and the guy's trapped. There's no escape from him. He is trapped. And by the end of the film, his wife's pregnant, and his unborn son is already has his path laid out for him. It's just a wonderful film. Johnny Toad directs beautifully because he doesn't over stylize anything, he just lets things hang. But I think the camera's always in the right place to capture things and he, he always lets the actors have some space to do things. He allows the camera work to be fun but not overly over the top. And he knows the focus is still the characters. The focus, he knows when to let the film have fun because the characters in these scenes are a bit more fun. And then locks it down for the more serious characters who have the actual drama, meet the drama. Just so well directed, so well written. This is just a perfect series. I'm glad they stopped after two. That's, they don't need any more. That set is done. So, Election, Election 2, just go see. They are wonderful films. They're just so, so good. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be back tomorrow with another one. So, I'll see you then. Bye for now.